Okay, so let's dive right in to the Burgess Shale sponge. That was not a sponge. Um, so chancellorids, um, they are a pretty enigmatic group um, of organisms from the Burgess Shale. And of course, most of you probably know a lot of creatures from the Burgess Shale were quite bizarre and uh, we don't know much about a lot of their um, behaviors or lifestyles. But this one in particular, we actually uh, do know quite a lot about. So let's find out why it was not a sponge. So how do I get rid of this? There we go. So the discovery. Um, Chancellora was discovered in uh, the Walcott Quarry in the Burgess Shale. So, I mean, <laughs> for those of you who do not know, that's in British Columbia, Canada, in the Rocky Mountains, Yoho National Park. And the Burgess Shale was about early to mid Cambrian, um, 508 million years ago. And the uh, site, or I guess the specimen, was described in 1920. Um, Chancellora was named after Chance Chancellor Peak. It's a mountain near the Burgess Shale. Um, and it's found at other locations in the world. Um, it's found in China. And um, there's been really nice specimens found in the States. I think Utah's Wheeler Shale as well. Um, but the original specimen was described by Charles uh, Doolittle Walcott. And when it was first described, it was believed to be um, part of a group of primitive sponges. And now you can clearly see why. It's got a very sponge-like shape. Um, it has radial symmetry. So if you cut it down the top into quarters, um, each section would look the same. It's, it's very can-like in appearance. And you can see all those little trident shapes dotting the body. Um, those were believed to be spicules, which are these little, um, I guess, armor plating that make up some species, some types of sponges. Um, and they look very similar to spicules. Um, another reason it was believed to be a sponge, sponges were extremely common at the Burgess Shale site very common during this time. They made up um, a big group of the um, sessile diversity. So they, they were just sitting on the seafloor um, being eaten and, and pumping nutrients out of the water to eat. So um, yeah, similar shape, sessile, radial symmetry. So yeah, no, it clearly looks like a sponge, um, has all the key features and traits of the sponge. There's even an opening at the top. It has, um, connection to the seafloor at the bottom. Um, later on, it was actually found to be uh, not a sponge, obviously, <laughs> hence the title of the presentation. Um, the spicules all over its body um, were actually found to be a type of dermal uh, sclerite. So sclerites are hardened parts of um, a body like um, insects, exoskeletons are made out of sclerites, right? Um, so there's these hard protective bits that the animal or organism probably would have used to protect itself from um, predation. Um, and it seems to be lumped into one species. Um, now we know it's, it's three separate species within chancellorids. Um, shoot, now I gotta butcher the names. Uh, we've got Chancellora eros. We've got Alonia titanospis. No, titanopsis, close enough. And um, Archiesterella coricea, yeah. Um, and they've got very distinct, um, very distinct sclerites on their bodies, as well as very distinctive shapes and uh, lifestyles, one of which is often found attached to sponges, um, which is quite interesting. So 
Of course, they share a very similar lifestyle to most of the sponges in the Burgess Shale. Um, they're sessile, meaning they could not move. They're anchored to the seafloor. Um, they were probably able to contract their body to um, pump water in and out of the hole at the top. Um, and that is most likely how they fed um, type of filter feeding. Now, sponges have holes throughout their body um, that they would pump water into and then water would come out the top of the sponge, the big hole. Um, but chancellorids only have that hole at the top of the body. So they probably were using that to suck water in and then pump it out as well. Um, they have a root bulb, which is the base that would connect them to the seafloor or anchor them to like rocks or other organisms. Um, they're quite abundant actually, um, which is neat. And if you look at their appearance in other fossil sites, they do have um, quite an abundance in other localities as well. Um, of course, these little trident shapes were most likely used as a defense um, because they're sessile organism, they can't escape predation. So they're going to use those to protect against um, predatory worms. There's a variety of um, lobopods, which are worms with legs that lived in the Cambrian that are known to feed on sponges and possibly would have fed on chancellorids. Um, hence the um, spines for protection. And a few sponges in the Burger Shale also have um, similar adaptation where they have the, uh, the large spines for protection. And uh, they would have also been filter feeders. Um, the environment they live in um, was home to many other sessile organisms as well as uh, vast uh, diversity of bizarre life. Um, I'm not going to go over a lot of species. So I basically was like, just, yeah, I'm just going to talk about a few creatures that have been found in the same blocks in on the same shale. Um, so I don't need to go too in depth, but you can see on the left here, there is a really massive predatory worm, a toya. Um, this worm would have lived in the sediment and um, telescoped out with that nozzle at the end to attack prey items. Um, it probably would not have preyed on chancellorids. Um, in the center here, we've got a sponge, a very cool branching sponge, uh, Voxia. And this sponge actually is found commonly to be an, an item that they anchor to. Um, so you can see a lot of the times they're found interwoven with the Voxia um, branches. Um, and then you see this kind of half heart shape that is the uh, shell of an Ioxys. It's an arthropod with this kind of hinged bivalve shell on its back that it would have used to protect itself. And they're quite common in these deposits as well. And also chancellor, it's probably anchored on to like these dead arthropod shells um, so they wouldn't be blown over. Um, continuing on, there's a lot of interesting brachiopods that are found connected to the chancellorids. Um, so in the same way the chancellorids are anchoring to other things, um, brachiopods would also use chancellorids as a um, means of anchoring themselves down. Um, some brachiopods had these little um, stalks and they would use those to anchor themselves to the substrate or other shells, other organisms. And sometimes they produce a type of cement if they don't have uh, this little hold fast and they'd use that cement to stick on to um, chancellorids and sponges and other stuff. I think the cements formed with a type of sugar, which is quite cool, but oftentimes you'd find these little brachiopods um, interwoven with the armor plating on the chancellorids. Um, this guy's micromitra. <laughs> it's got a little scaly pattern on it, and they're quite small. Um, 
oh, I just talked about this, interactions, yeah. So they're intergrowing with the Boxia sponges um, and they've got the micrometra um, brachiopods within their sclerites. Um, here's some more examples of the chancellora anchoring to the Voxia. Um, it seems like the body kind of curves depending on the orientation it's growing. So it's always facing upright. Um, and you can see down below here at the right, the kind of root bulb where it would be anchoring uh, to the substrate or other organisms. Um, quite a few specimens were collected um, back when Walcott was working on the quarry. Um, and there was quite a diversity. Um, you can see the, the fatter ones here and then the longer ones. <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of difference, but Walcott believed the variation um, wasn't really a sign of separate species. Um, and the, uh, the sclerites are very clear here. They've got more of a star pattern um, in this specimen and at the top here, whereas this individual has the trident shape. Oh, oh that was quick. Hopefully that went in like 10 minutes. So <laughs> in conclusion, um, these organisms were uh, not sponges actually, I think it, did I skip over that part? Pretty sure there was a slide saying what they were. So nature, primitive, root sponge. Oh, I think I'm missing a slide. Um, so <laughs> they're now believed to be part of um, or in relation to uh, jellyfish, <laughs> um, like a, a distant split ancestor um, or in a similar group um, where they have a single body cavity without the openings um, because obviously it wouldn't be related to sponges as it doesn't have the body holes that sponges would have um, but it's still sort of undetermined um, it's not confirmed to be closely related to jellyfish um, or nadarians um, but that's the current understanding at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, in conclusion, they were not sponges, but it was more of a case of convergent evolution leading these organisms to adapt a similar lifestyle as sponges, being sessile and filter feeding, and also having that elongated body section with the hole at the top. Um, and yeah, it's still a mystery uh, taxon, but it seems like we're in the right direction when it comes to figuring out the true identity of chancellorids. Um, and there's my citations. <laughs> um, this was actually, this presentation was based off of a paper that I read in uh, Paleo Electronica where I did a uh, poster for it. I entered their uh, poster contest and I got second to last, but at least I didn't get last. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I adapted it into a presentation form to do for YouTube and uh, just had it handy for this presentation. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, hope it wasn't too quick, but we can extend it a bit more if there's any questions. I'm actually really happy to discuss it with you guys um, and other Burgess uh topics. So. Yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs>